Welcome to the Impactful Entrepreneur Show with Adrian Hill, a place for online business industry expertise and thought leadership, where you can build the skills, structure, and systems you need to thrive in business and have a lasting impact in your industry. Let's do this. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am super excited about this training session because there are many podcasts and coaches who teach you the technical side of podcasting. But Eric K. Johnson is the premier coach focused on the art of podcasting with the Podcast Talent Coach. He's been atop the radio rating since 2000 and coached many others to even greater success. Eric is a nationally recognized podcast and radio talent coach on-air personality, and radio program director, seen on stage at Podcast Movement, New Media Expo, Authority and Influencer Summit, and more. We are so blessed to have Eric here with us. So welcome, Eric. Um, I'm super excited to dig into the Audience Explosion Blueprint with you. Adrian, thanks for having me. I I am extremely excited to be here as well. I love it. I love it. Well, I know before we dive into all the goodness, I know the audience is just hungry for this topic because it's such a popular one, but really quickly, just in case there are people in the audience who have not met you yet, do you want to tell us just a little bit about your story and and how is it that you found yourself in this space of being an expert on the art of podcasting? Absolutely. You know, so many uh, YouTube videos will teach you how to launch a show, but so many experts get their show launched and they go, uh, okay, now what do I do? (laughs) And so that's where I come in to help them out. I got into this completely by accident. I was actually getting my degree in architecture at the uh, university of Nebraska grew up, always wanted to be an architect. Uh, but about three years into it, I started falling out of love with architecture. Uh, I ended up happened to get a job at a radio station by accident. My brother worked at a radio station and they called looking for him because they needed somebody to fill in and he wasn't home. And they said, Hey, we need some, we need some part-time help. Are you interested? And I said, yeah, I'm a broke college kid. I could use some extra money. So I picked up the job at the radio station just to make some extra money. Thought it was pretty cool. I needed an elective for my architecture degree. And who's not looking for an easy A when they're in college, right? So I took broadcasting for the non-major because I was already doing it. And uh, one night in class, the program director of the radio station came in and said, we're looking for a music director for the campus radio station, if you're interested. So I went up to him after class and I said, I'd be interested. I'm not a broadcasting major. I'm getting my degree in architecture, but that sounds pretty cool. He said, you don't have to be a major. We're just looking for somebody passionate about it. I said, well, I'm your guy. So I took that gig to make a little extra college money, started falling into love with radio and out of love with architecture. But I was so close to finishing my degree. I just finished the degree in architecture and stayed in radio. And I'd been in radio for the next 35 years. And so many people say, man, radio and architecture, how crazy, I mean, how diverse can that be? And I said, well, no, if you think about it, they're actually fairly similar because in both professions, you're given a structure, a set of parameters, and you have to be creative within those set of parameters. And so it taps into both my analytical brain and my creative brain together to create these, these pieces And so uh, I started doing it with radio and loved it, Um, built and grew radio stations, multiple radio stations, even my own show. In 2009, I fell in love with podcasting because it was like the Wild West, right? It was the whole new frontier. You could do whatever you wanted, create whatever content you wanted. But as I listened to it, it sounded like they were all in their mom's basement next to the water heater creating really bad amateur radio. And I was like, (laughs) oh, no. And I thought. Man, if these people just knew some of the tactics we used in radio, their shows could be so much better. Their content could have so much more impact and their podcasts could be so much more effective in growing their business if they just put a strategy in place. Mm -hmm. So I started coaching podcasters to take their content, transform their information into engaging entertainment so they can build powerful, profitable relationships with their content and with their podcast. And that's how Podcast Talent Coach was born. I've been doing it for the last decade or so. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I mean, what an interesting, what I love about your story is you were just open to possibilities. 
Absolutely. Right? You, you weren't like closed minded, like I have to fit in this little box and that's how life works. Like you were open to just whatever life had for you. And because of that, like, look at the cool stuff you're doing now. I love and, it. And that's the key to both architecture and radio and podcasting. You're giving, you're given the guidelines and the parameters. Now go be creative inside of that. And that's, yeah. that's kind of how I approach life, right? Life gives me what I give. And so how do I take those parameters and get creative? Yeah. And have fun with it. I love it. I love that's it. That's what so my coaches say a lot too. They'll say, oh, I never thought about it that way. You know, because I always say, well, there's not just one way to success. How do we take what you're doing and figure out how to do it in a way you love that also grows your business? Yeah, absolutely. And and podcasting can be such a fun way to do that. And it's it's growing in popularity. Absolutely. Um, growing by leaps and bounds. It's crazy how fast it's growing. Very quickly right now. So for those, I mean, I'm sure there's a big portion of the audience there tuning in because they're already realizing how hot this is, but maybe there's some in the audience who hadn't really considered podcasting just yet. So tell us a little bit about why would people want to use podcasting as a marketing tool and what are some, some of the benefits of tapping into that, that um, traffic source? When I first started in radio, I thought, man, like, who am I? Who am who am I to get on the radio? I'm an architect. <laughs> like, I, you know, and all these guys are on the radio. They, you know, they've studied radio. They've gone to school. They have broadcasting degrees. And here I am, like, trying to play dress up. Like, you know, I'm just faking it, trying to be them, right? And yeah. then one day my program director said, when are you going to stop trying to be them and start being yourself? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she goes, all, everything that you do on the radio is an imitation of somebody else. She said, when you stop being somebody else and start being yourself, that's when you will be successful. And that was the day I did. I started being my authentic self on the radio and got confident in who I was. It's difficult standing in a room, talking to people you can't see, hoping you're entertaining them. And right. so like, there's no feedback loop. Like you don't none, get to see the people none, on the other end. None at all. And so- <laughs> I just had to be true to myself. And when I did, that's when my show took off and, and became the most listened to show in town just because I was me. And people would come up to me after listening to me for years and having never met me, they would say, man, I feel like we know each other. One night at the hockey game, my wife and I, my kids were walking down the concourse of the hockey game and this couple started coming at us and they stopped, Eric, hey, and we have this five minute conversation about all the, you know, all these are your kids and yada, yada, yada. And so, okay, great seeing you, take care. And they walk away and my wife smacks me. And I was like, what was that for? And she goes, well, you didn't introduce me. And I go, honey, I don't even have any clue who those people were. <laughs> like they just, they listen to me on the radio and they think they know me. And that's the power of audio is that you build that relationship through the theater of the mind. Now with video, if you and I are watching a video, we see the exact same thing. There's very little left to the imagination. If we're watching a video of a red uh, Ford Mustang sitting outside of a casino, you and I see the exact same thing, right? There's no interpretation there. It's a red Mustang sitting outside of a casino. But if I tell you that story through audio, you envision it in a way that is perfect for you in the theater of the mind. You know, is it daytime or nighttime? Is it a a 1968 Mustang or is it a 1986 Mustang? Is it a hard top or a convertible? Is it daytime or nighttime? Is the casino lit up? Is anybody else standing around it? Are you in the red Mustang? Or are you outside the rest Mustang? Is there anybody else near the red? Like all of these things are perfect for you in your mind, in your theater of the mind through the power of storytelling. Well, and, and that's I love what that separates phrase, the theater of the mind, the theater like, of the mind. Yeah. Because we all like, we're all going to visualize different things. Absolutely. And that's what separates audio from video. Yeah. And, and so video is powerful. YouTube is a powerful search engine. So I always recommend take your podcast, record it on video and use that for your YouTube channel, but strip yeah. the audio and use that for your podcast because your video will create awareness through search. But yeah. your audio will create a relationship that is powerful than anything you've ever built. Oh, I love that. And I, and that's exactly what I do. So spoiler alert, like long after this interview is <laughs> over, 
it'll end up going on our YouTube channel and it will end up being issued as a podcast in the future. So, you know, those who are in attendance at this event live will get it hot off the press. The rest of the world will have to wait a little bit, but <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, but, it's, yeah. but it, you do it without doubling the work. Right. And then you can take the notes or the transcription and put that up as a blog post. So now yeah. people who enjoy video can go find it. People who enjoy audio can find it. People who love to skim the text can find it. So yeah. now you've repurposed it in three different formats for three different audiences without tripling your work. Yeah, I love that. So, you know, it's all about working smarter, not harder. And and truly thinking through all the different ways you can leverage that powerful asset that you have. And I love that, you know different people have different learning styles. Some people prefer audio. Some people are Absolutely. like, just give me the blog. That's all I want. I like to read. And other people are just like video all the way. But I, I find it to be interesting. Tons of people who listen to video turn the audio off and they only read the captions. So weird. <laughs> so weird. It's that like, is strange. I mean, it is strange. Well, I know. and as you create your content for your podcast, spend less time teaching the how and more time uh, inspiring with the why. Yeah. If you really, people will take one big thing away from your podcast. What's the one big takeaway today? And if you share story and talk a lot about the why, uh, and then offer them the opportunity to get the how by coming to work with you, you'll be much more successful than trying to teach the how on your podcast. It's people are doing other things. There's only one reason why people listen to audio and that's for companionship. They don't want to do whatever it is they're doing by themselves. If they're working out, they have their earbuds in listening to something because they don't want to work out on their own. If they're driving, they have something on on the radio because they don't want to drive by themselves. Yeah. And so they're not taking notes. They're not actively uh, sitting there scribbling down everything you're saying. They're they're building a relationship with you. They're, you're there for companionship. So use your podcast to grow relationships by sharing a bit of yourself, telling fantastic stories, stirring emotion and talking about the why, and then send them to your lead magnet or your webinar or your summit or some resource that will give them a bit of the what. And then that leads them to working with you to get the how. I love it. Yeah, it's so smart. So many people get stuck teaching how-to content and then they create an audience of creepy seekers and they're like, how did this happen Absolutely. to me? <laughs> right. It's not doing anything to bring me any clients. Why not? Well, I just got everything I needed by listening to your show. Why would I want to hire you to give me the same thing? Yeah. So spend more time doing that. So many people, so many podcasters come to me and they say, I'm not getting any clients. And I listen to their show and there's a couple of reasons why. One, they don't have anything to sell. They don't, they don't have an offer, right? I listen to their show and wow, you gave me great content, but I heard nothing about how to work with you. And yeah. then if they do have an offer, the second challenge is that they're not asking for the sale. There's no call to action. Like, Hey, if you want a free strategy call with me, here's where to get it. Like mm -hmm. you have to have an offer and you have to ask for the sale and, and get people to come there. Anybody can take your six steps to success and teach it on their podcast. If that's all you're doing on your show is offering information, I can take that same information and duplicate it. And the there's nothing different about your show that makes you stand out in the sea of sameness. The mm -hmm. only thing that will make you stand out from everybody else is you. Yeah. It's the story that you tell and the things that you share and your unique personality that makes me fall in love with you every time I listen to you because we become friends. Yeah. I don't care what you're teaching, but you have to tell your story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's, and there's so many people out there who, you know, and, and I'm sure even those watching right now are like, you find that you're just drawn to certain people. You love the way they explain things or the way they show things or just the sound of their voice or whatever it might be about them. Like we'll all naturally be drawn to the people that are right for us. Right. But yeah. And it's, it seems so intuitive yet. So many people miss it that, you're not, you, you have to have an offer and you have to offer it. You have to ask <laughs> right. for the sale to get sales. But so many people miss that step. It's really interesting. <laughs> well, I was on a coaching call the other day and they're like, man, how do I figure out what to talk about? Like I, I'm, you know, I'm running out of content ideas. And I said, well, you're running out of content ideas because you're focused on the wrong thing. You're mm -hmm. trying to decide what your audience wants to hear rather than delivering content that will attract your ideal client. You need to do it in the other way. And if everything you do is leading them to working with you, then all of your content 
should focus on getting them to that point to take that first step in the in the uh, process in your funnel. If you look at a guy like Dave Ramsey on the Dave Ramsey Show, Dave Ramsey runs Financial Peace University. He teaches people how to get out of debt. It's his eight baby steps. Mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey's been doing a three-hour radio show five days a week for 30 years answering the exact same question. And he's been giving one of eight baby steps as the exact same over answer. And over the and over. only difference is the context in which the question is asked. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of debt is different, uh, how much debt they're in, their their uh, job situation is different. You know, it's just the context that you wrap your answer around. So yeah. spend more time focused on the challenges that your clients are facing, wrap it in that context, and then provide the same answer. It all leads to work with me. Here, here are my steps that get you through it. Right. Because, yeah, if you anchor them in why they should be doing something and what to do, but you leave them wondering how, they're naturally going to want help with how. Absolutely. If they and have I, the why. I'll give, you the, the I'll give you the what all day long, you know, and if you want to go implement it, then knock yourself out. You know, it's going to take you twice as long and you're going to have twice as many frustrations. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want me to take your hand and walk you every step of the way, I'm I'm more than happy to do that. And, you know, I learned that lesson too. I, I went through a phase in early on in my business where I was convinced, like, I can just listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos and figure it all out myself. And like, you just make 10 times less for 10 times longer when you try to do <laughs> right. that. Like, right. so now I don't do anything in my business now without linking in with someone who's already done it, getting them as a mentor and working with them. Cause I would rather shortcut that learning curve as short as possible. I mean, you can, you can spend time or you can spend money. You know, it's yeah. been said so many times. I have uh, a podcast fast blueprint course where I take people through it and launch their podcast in 30 days or less. And it's super easy. Uh, you can go online. You can go on YouTube and search for ways to launch a podcast and figure it out and tinker with it and wonder what equipment to buy. It'll You can get there for free. You know, and you'll spend hours and hours and hours Absolutely. researching, comparing resources, comparing yeah. making decisions, decision analysis, analysis paralysis, like, oh, <laughs> right. Which microphone should I get? You know, and then I got the wrong microphone. So now I had to go buy another microphone to get the right microphone because you don't know which information to believe. Yeah. And so let me show you a proven way that's done it. Walk you through these 21 steps. We'll have your show launched in 30 days and you'll do it the right way. And you'll have a foundation built so you can start attracting your ideal clients. Yeah. The, my absolutely. most frustrating client is the one that has come to me and launched in the wrong way. And we now have to go, okay, I need to get you off of blog talk radio. I like need erase to erase all the bad behavior. Let's right. Start I over. have to undo, we, you know, it takes us 15 <laughs> days to undo what you've already done. And then the next 30 to, to recreate it. Like let's mm -hmm. start from scratch and get you going from there. Do it right from the beginning. Yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. So speaking of which, speaking of some of those challenges, maybe getting started the wrong way, what are some of the biggest challenges that coaches face using their podcasts to grow their business? Yeah, one of one of the biggest challenges uh, coaches face is that they say, well, it's hard for me to, to offer something for sale on my podcast without making it sound like a big ad. And those are the people who spend too much time with the how. Mm -hmm. Right. They're they're oh, well, I don't want to give away too much information because then they're not going to buy it from me. So I just tease them and then offer it for sale. Well, that's a that's called an ad. Stop doing that. Spend more time talking about the why, stirring emotion, building relationships, and serving your audience. Give them the how or the uh, what, right? Give them the six steps. Here are your six steps. If you want. Here, I'll give you the six steps to profitable podcasting. First, build yourself a solid foundation. Know exactly who you're targeting and create your content for that individual. Second, attract an audience. Go out and find people who love what you do and bring them into your world. Third, create content that serves those people. Fourth, build relationships using your content. Tell your story and build your relationships. Fifth, have a starting strategy. Where do they go to continue the conversation and take that first step in working with you? And then sixth, where do you convert your clients? Where's yeah. your client conversion process? That's it. Now go do it, right? I'll give you the what all day long. And if you want to go implement that, you go, yeah, I know how to go attract an audience. Great. Then you can do it yourself. Serve first. Mm -hmm. And then the, the sale is basically, if you'd like my help with it, here's how you can get more. 
Yeah. I have a podcast strategy call. I get people on, I get I, coaches come to me for a strategy call and, and yeah. a lot of coaches get that pit in their stomach. Oh, another sales call. I don't want to get on a sales call. My strategy calls are strategy calls. They're not sales calls. Same. We, yeah. we spend an hour building their strategy. Mm-hmm. Here's where you are. Here's where you want to go. Let's build the bridge to get there. Yeah. And then here's my sales pitch. After we're all done with the strategy and I go, does that sound like a, a plan of action for you? They say, yes, here's my sales pitch. Would you like some help with that? Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's all I say. And they go, yeah. they go, yeah, what does that look like? And we talk about it. I don't yeah. sell anybody. I show them what's possible and ask them if they want help. And more times than not, they say, yes, let yeah. me have some of that. So that's how you offer things without making it sound like an ad. But then they get struggled and they go, yeah, but, but you know, it's uh. Uh, what do I talk about? You know, podcasts, a lot of podcasts go away at seven episodes. They stop publishing. And I thought when I first got into podcasting, I thought that's crazy. It's seven. Like why put all the work into it and then stop at seven. And I started looking into it. And there are three reasons that podcasts fade away after seven episodes. One, it's a lot more work than they thought it was going to be because they don't have a system in place to produce consistently without eating up their entire week. They're on YouTube trying to figure it out. That's what they're yeah. doing. That's what the they're sec- doing. Yeah. Their, their second reason is they don't have a strategy to grow the audience. The audience isn't growing as fast as they thought it would. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought if I built it, they would come. That doesn't happen. Nope. Right. So we need to have a strategy to build the audience and do it in a quick way. And then the third reason they go away is they're not making money as fast as they thought it would. And they have to have a strategy in place to convert your listeners to clients. How do you, how are we leading them to that first step in the process where they go and get your lead magnet or your resource so they can take the first step in working with you? It's all about building a sound strategy. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the other challenge that podcasters face is how do I use my podcast in my overall uh, marketing strategy? And if Mm -hmm. you implement the the six steps in my podcast profits framework, you build a strategy to attract an audience build a relationship with that audience and then get them started working with you. You walk through those six steps and that's where it all comes to life. I love it. Well, and it's super simple. And just like you said, it's one thing to know what to do, but you know what? The devil's in the details and the exact how is almost where everyone gets stuck. So you've perfectly like laid out your six steps for us and we all know what to do. But for those in the audience who are like, this is what I needed. The light bulb just went off. I need help with the how of these six <laughs> steps. I know that you have a free gift that can help them do exactly that. You want to tell us a little bit about it? I do. A lot of people say, well, I don't know what kind of podcast to create. Like, should I interview people or should I, should it be a solo show or what should I do? So I've created five secret podcasting strategies to attract your high ticket coaching clients. And these, you don't have to implement all five. You pick the one that works best for you and implement that. So it's five ways to attract your high ticket coaching clients. It will, it's, uh, you can attract these clients without eating up your entire week. Even if you don't have a podcast and you want to use podcasting to get your ideal high ticket coaching clients, these strategies can work for you as well. So you can download that. It's absolutely free. There'll be a button somewhere around this, this, video, look for it somewhere nearby. (laughs) It'll give you a little taste of what podcasting can do for you and the uh, transformation it can make in your business. Awesome. Oh, I love that. Now for those people who are, maybe they're leveraging podcasts already, but they're, they're the ones being interviewed. I know you have a VIP gift for them. You want to tell us about that? I do. I do. So the VIP gift will help if you're creating interviews on your podcast, or if you're doing interviews on other podcasts, I have interviewed hundreds of artists over the the course of time everybody from from uh Blake Shelton to Melissa Etheridge to Ozzy Osbourne like they've all been on my radio show I've I've done a ton of online interviews I have created a program called crush your next podcast interview like a radio pro and in that program I interview Jason Derulo on what makes a great interview what he loves and dislikes about interviews we talk to Carrie Underwood we talk to Miranda Lambert there are a lot of artists in that program talking about how to create great interviews what you should do on a great interview 
Uh, I should give you examples of great interviews and show you how to build a relationship with your audience through interviews. It's called Crush Your Next Podcast Interview Like a Radio Pro Without Decades of Training and Hours of Frustration. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Impactful Entrepreneur Show. If you found amazing value here, like, subscribe, and leave us a review to help other people find the high value content that we share and find us on social media so we can continue the conversation. See you in the next episode.